if you took some random person walking down Lafayette Street and said, what does surveillance look like to you? They may have imaginings of radar dishes and headphones and wires. And of course, what Snowden was revealing was much more esoteric than that. Edward Snowden's disclosure of thousands of classified documents revealed the scope of American surveillance and has left outrage and confusion in its wake. Because we all carry within us a certain fantasy, a certain fearful vision of what surveillance might look like, we can tap into that. On Sunday, May 4th, the Processional Arts Workshop, which seeks to preserve and promote public procession using large-scale puppetry, staged a Procession of Confession, the penultimate event in this year's Penn Festival for International Literature in New York City. The fact that the NSA could tap into uh, the range of things that it was able to tap into is because we are so interconnected. Your information is now pinging all over the place, and sooner or later you will cross a node where the NSA is listening. The procession included several different characters. The confessors, with dunce caps and pixelated headshots, were stand-ins for the general public. Their confessions were mundane details, really, and were broadcast over tiny speakers and parasols. On the 8th at 2.32 p.m., I made my first fresh direct purchase online. There were web-crawling spiders with radar dish heads and radome bodies. I'm trying to get like a coordination going so that they move in a spidery kind of fashion. Leading the procession was Our Lady of Perpetual Surveillance, with filaments for fingers and a drop cam broadcasting to a live website as an all-seeing eye. I have the kind of same big brother worries that everybody else has. There's a limit to what I want the government to know about me. Solomon Rushdie founded the Penn Festival 10 years ago to defend freedom of expression and foster global dialogue. There is a real argument to be had, which is not even a kind of good, good guy, bad guy argument. It's just, it's just a question of what do we do with the world we've made? So one of the things that we have to do in forums like this is to try and argue that out. In the spirit of this year's festival, the procession explored the politics and ethics of surveillance. If we just carried a poster with our didactics, it would be less interesting. It would be a very finite experience. Oh, it's a protest. They don't like the NSA. They're carrying signs saying down with surveillance. You know, I don't know how I feel about that, but I know what they feel. Uh, I think that's a very limiting way of creating performance. The Processional Arts Workshop was founded by Alex Kahn and Sophia Michaelis. They crowdsourced the confessions and held workshops over the course of the festival where attendees helped build the puppets and learned how to make them move. The preparing and the building of a procession for me is actually just as important as the final event. We gave people strict parameters for costumes, but people came in with their own twists. So at every juncture, we are open to people's interpretations. The procession wound through the East Village, under canopies and through the wind and rain. People stopped to watch and to film it. Then, one hour after it began, it was over. Paul Valéry, the French poet, uh, I'm not quoting him exactly here, but he made this statement about poetry, which is that there is this gap that's created between the moment of seeing or hearing and the moment of understanding. And for me, when we do this work, that gap is really where the art happens.